Yeah, good morning everyone. Hope everyone is well. And uh, we can get started with the midweek market update. Um, as you guys know from yesterday, I updated everyone on my closing positions on Euro dollar and silver and dollar yen. So we are going to take a look at what's going on now. Seems like there's some good kind of hope, uh, good continuation. So that's very good to see, right? We'll take a look into a little bit deeper about what my approach are and things like that. Um, I think it's totally fine to exit the position and then potentially recap back in if we can complete this larger descending structure. Okay, so we'll go over in, in depth about this and then um, I'm just gonna give another 30 seconds or so. I did start a little bit later, so I'll give another 30 seconds to see who will jump in and we will get started. All right. My picture far off on the screen. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I will change this to here. Okay, so let's get started now. Let's get started. All, uh, a lot of you guys are pouring in into YouTube and training view. Good. So we're gonna get started. Um, so as you guys talk, as I mentioned, I closed down Euro dollar. I closed down silver. For, I'm sorry, dollar yen here for break even, and I also closed down silver as well over here for a little bit of profit. So. Let me just connect this really quick, guys, and then I can um, show you guys. So I closed on these positions, um, just in a little bit of profit, and then we'll see how these goes, right? So Euro dollar, Euro dollar, silver. Um, what I want to see ultimately from the price now, because it started dropping down, um, is that if we look at here, basically my management at the time was to exit once I see lower time frame bearish correction, right? Which is exactly kind of what happens here. And then uh, we did take profit here and then kind of just observe what will happen. Now, I remember a couple of people asking me, should I be selling here? Should I be selling here? Um, I, I ultimately all answer, well, based on your plan, of course, but personally for my plan, uh, I'm just not going to catch a falling knife, right? Because in this case, uh, it's inverse related, but same idea, right? Like this is a falling knife. I wouldn't be catching a falling knife and trying to go long. Right? And I think that's probably the logical decision because we can see that uh, after after price dropped down a little bit here, it kind of just started climbing up again. Right? So we want to be careful with something like this is that while there is lower time frame bearish price action, let's not forget about that. But is this sell here, like a little right shoulder here, enough to justify itself or maybe a sell here? Is that enough to justify itself? Right? You got to think about your, your own trading plan your own perspective. To me, the reason why I'm not selling because I still weigh heavier on the higher time frame, right? The higher time frame ultimately is the key. And uh, if we look at higher time frame, it is bullish in my eye, right? So if it's bullish in my eye, I'm not going to try to, you know, catch the top here and try to think that, you know, catch a sell down, even though it's a possibility, but it doesn't align up with the overall higher time frame. Right. Some people might argue, well, I, I don't want to trade higher time frame. I only want to trade lower time frame. Certainly that's, you know, within your right if it's in your plan, but you got to 
the way how I see it is we have to consider what's going on on the higher time frame because it adds confluence to your trades, right? Remember, we always talk about multi time frame, top down approach. If we're going to ignore the higher time frame and only trade the lower time frame, then lower time frame tends to have a lot more noise. It tends to be, uh, you're always going to see price action on the lower time frame, but it may not, may or may not work out as much as a trade that you combine the higher time frame and lower time frame with because that's multi time frame analysis. It's going to add better probability. It's not a guarantee, of course, right? But it's going to be a, prob a better probability of entry rather than a lower time frame entry uh, because of the higher time frame significance. So I just want to talk about that a little bit because that was a question that brought up in Telegram yesterday and I thought uh, using the chart to explain is probably easier. <laughs> So that's Euro dollar I got out for pretty massive. I think the two trades combined with it's about 7.9% or so. I'm very, very happy with the result, even though it's potentially pushing up now, but that's fine, right? That's how trading is. We're not investing. We're getting in at the correct price. We're getting out at the correct price, but that doesn't mean that I cannot continue to get myself back into this potential long if it does initially break out, if it does uh, complete this decent destruction on the higher time frame, if it does impulse out and receive further continuation, then certainly uh, it's within my right to get back into the position and look for another upside. All right, so that's Euro dollar. Uh, I just want to quickly go over that. And the only live position right now I have is uh, Ripple. I already have Ripple going on right now. Ripple is a position I talked about on Monday, if I believe, and uh, basically just hovering around here right now. I'm happy to just gonna wait it out. I actually haven't even moved my stop loss to break even. I'm still one to one right now. So it did kind of complete this right shoulder here, right? So inverse head and shoulder, double bottom here, uh, break off on this ECD channel, and then bullish up move. So all that is in my favor to continue this potential trade. And because of crypto, because of the volatility and the movement, uh, I haven't moved my stop loss to break even yet. I'm just kind of just chilling around here. Uh, I will I set alert here to see how the price will react, but I'm happy to see this overall price action play out and see if we can potentially get an up move that I want to see. So that is that. So let's get started now with the outlook, right? It looks like a lot of you guys have put it in. I'm kind of catching up to the message here. Um, microphone, microphone, microphone. Okay, guys, sorry. I will get my AirPod things going on. I will, I will use my microphone, sorry, guys. I kind of just been I kind of just been yapping for a while, right? Oh, I see why. Is this a lot better, guys? Is this a lot better? Um, this is a lot better. Can you even just confirm it? Because I know why now. I basically had these AirPod on. And I didn't know they're on, and I was just kind of speaking from the laptop. But I think it's better now. Can you guys just give me a yes that it's better? Not much. No. Why? How about, uh, how about now? I'm just gonna speak from this. I'm just gonna speak from my computer. Is this better or no? 
Your voice is exactly the same as is with without them. Um, seems like people on YouTube is hearing it differently. Um, can you guys give me <laughs> no, not better on YouTube? Um, let me see what I can do here. Oh, I think this is might be one. Um, just give me a guy. Sorry, guys. Give me a moment here. Let me try to set this up. It's fine on Trading View, but it's not fine on YouTube. I apologize. Okay, how about now, everyone? Can you please let me know how about now? I changed some settings. If it's okay, please let me know. I don't think YouTube has that setting, but I think I'm got it okay. Unless you guys don't think this is okay. Yeah, um, I think on trading view is fine, but looks like on YouTube is not okay. Yeah, I will send the trading view link. Do I have another microphone? I really don't. I'm sorry, guys. Dollar position. Uh, I closed down the euro dollar position. Uh, update this in my Telegram yesterday. I updated after this head and shoulder pattern. So trading here is much better. Okay, okay, okay. So why is it that YouTube is not? I don't know. In trading view sounds okay. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna figure that out after, but um, I apologize, guys. Um, if you guys can convert to TradingView or if YouTube gets better, then stay with YouTube, but it sh should be okay. TV, TradingView is perfect sound. Okay, okay. So let's get started. Sorry, I kind of just get lost track here, but uh, talk about Euro Dollar, talk about Silver, uh, talk about what else here? Yeah, so I'm not in any other position now. So I'm just on zero position right now on Forex, but I do have one position open for um, Ripple. Um, I don't really have too much on watch, guys. I really don't have too much. I will go over a few. Like, uh, I will go over dollar index, euro dollar, dollar yen. Uh, I will go over Aussie Kiwi. I think that's favorable or coming up to be something that I will be interested in. So I'll go over these ones. YouTube is giving problem. Yeah, I hopefully it's okay. Yeah, I appreciate you guys joining in on Trading View. But same idea, I appreciate um, you guys switching back and forth. And hopefully YouTube, if you guys see it better or it's getting better, uh, let me know that as well. I appreciate it. So let's get started. Um, dollar index, right? Like dollar index, we've been talking about a potential sell. We've been seeing or potentially looking at a continuation of dollar weakness. And on Monday, I talk about this area if it's going to push down to the low here. 
Um, it looks like there was some some pullback here or some you know um, uh, deeper consolidation, but in, in the end, we can see clearly what's going on here if we just zoom in a little bit. All price did is first create a inverse head and shoulder, pop to the upside, and then basically create another head and shoulder to push down the price. So if you look at this, what's going on? It's just a way of market correcting itself, right? It's not always going to be something that maybe we're familiar with, but it is still a correction that it looks like it may or may not create another top here to go, but basically it's telling us that there is another consolidation going on here. Um, but I reasonably, personally, I still reasonably believe that there is going to be another sell pitch down, another bearish kind of price action, at least to the low here and then kind of to see if price will either bounce off this area to the top and we create a head and shoulder to go down, or we're just going to break this kind of low here and then continue down with further correction. So I'll be kind of keeping an eye on this. Uh, right now I'm not in any positions, right? So I'm very happy to just kind of be on the sideline and uh, kind of wait for development really, just waiting for see if we're going to get further kind of push down from the price and we'll see how we're able to take advantage of this if it does start the next bearish run or the or kick off the next bearish push down because we still have quite a bit of room to the downside. So I do think there is potential, you know, next few days or maybe next week, we can look at this and see how it goes. Voice is fine on YouTube now. Okay, good. Voice volume is high on trading view and YouTube is getting feedback and echoes. Yeah, I'm not sure what I can do. Uh, hopefully, just I'm gonna get a microphone maybe, or maybe get something uh, for the next stream. So I apologize, everyone. Thank you for bear with me. Uh, usually I was okay with these, but maybe today something went up. So. Um, so euro dollar, right? I mentioned this in the beginning. Euro dollar, I'm talking about potential breakoff on the price. If we can get that, then I can re-enter the position. Uh, I mentioned about it's all about trading perspective, right? I am fine taking a profit here. I take secure a pretty decent profit, and because I wouldn't know what will happen. Remember, this is always something that I'm trying to teach everyone is. At this given stage, we have no idea if this is just going to start flat on going to the bottom, right? So. By holding your position without knowing what's going to happen here, uh, to me is not a large, it's not going to help you in the long run, uh, just based on my experience. A lot of times when something like this happened, you know, a, it, you know, a lot of us are in the beginning of our trading career, probably hoping that we're just going to consolidate and continue. Um, certainly we want that to happen, but what we always talk about market can do whatever it wants, right? So what if this head and shoulder becomes a huge kind of push down for the price and just push down massively and all your trade, all your profit, just give it back to the market. Uh, I think that's a big no-no for me in the, you know, in the consistency point of view. You can, you can secure whatever profit you want and especially when the trade has run pretty decent in profit already, it's a good idea to exit when you see something, right? But afterwards, whatever happened, we can't control and we wouldn't know about it, right? This is why we shouldn't be result-oriented. So maybe someone can argue, well, if you hold the trade now, you're back to the top. Well, yeah, certainly that can happen, but I wouldn't know all this, right? We didn't see any of these price action. All I can do is make a decision based on my plan and exit the position based on what the market give. Now, if we do continue push the upside, right? That's good to us, right? It's good news that we finally completed this higher time frame structure that expect further upside from the price and continue. Okay, so I did go over this. I'm not going to go into too, too, too much in detail, but I thought this is something a good uh, learning curve and a good experience for anyone who is struggling in this concept because I find too many traders often get upset, let's say if they exit the position here, and then a trader come up afterwards and they get upset that they exit the position, whereas they see something like this, they hold on to the position and the price continue to drop and they end up taking a much, much, much less profit than what they originally cut off. Okay, so it's a perspective thing and understand that there is no right and wrong when it comes to this. You exit your position based on your plan and exit on, based on what the market gives you, right? So. So let's continue here. 
Now, uh, dollar yen. Dollar yen, uh, I ended up taking a break even on Tuesday morning. I think uh, a couple other guys maybe entered this as well. So it's a good point here is that after this bullish push up, bullish correction, we push up to the top again. But what is it doing here? If we just zoom out here, well, all it is to me is the price just making a bigger structure, right? If we look at this, all I do is adjust my trend lines because this previous low uh, couldn't couldn't break the low and then continue, couldn't form any correction to go lower. So all that is telling you that it's just making a bigger consolidation. And every time when it does reach the top here, um, you should be able to identify something. And I saw maybe a couple of you guys or more of you guys trying to uh, call to sell down to a bell. So good job on your part. Um, I would say because this is around halfway now and this move is quite sharp, so there's likely to be a correction here if it does. Uh, but because I did take, if you guys recall, I did take uh, a loss here in late August and I take a break even here in early September or yesterday. So I'm going to be a little bit more strict. I'm not planning to enter something like this, but I would consider if we have a impulsive break in a correction after to sell. I think this will be a much better one for me now because after I have taken a loss here and a break even here. So I'm going to be extra cautious when it comes to this position and I'm going to be a little bit more um, on the sideline until I see this consolidation finish. Whereas if you guys caught it on the top, good job on your part, right? Obviously hold the trade if, you know, make it to break even, whatever, if try, if the position hasn't reversed yet. If it pushed down, you know, if you want to scale in another position, I think that's totally fine. Um, I think the larger of this correction goes, the better it is for us to understand what's going on here. If we just zoom out here, we have that reversal semi-channel. This to me is an impulsive move. This is a larger correction. All with this is we're creating another correction within the larger correction, but the bearish bias doesn't change in my opinion. The double top is still there. The impulsive move is still there. This is a larger correction. So if we can see a impulse correction, impulse down, and within the impulse is an impulse correction, impulse down, right? So understand what's going on here. Uh, will give us a little bit better edge. Uh, other than that, I don't really have other dollar pairs on watch. So a lot of you guys may be in Aussie dollar or Kiwi dollar or one of the other dollars. Uh, I personally are is not. I'm not in any dollar pair at the moment. Um, but there is some question here if I can take a look on these Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar or maybe Kiwi dollar. I'm just looking back at the question, guys. I have quite a bit of comments, so I'm just trying to um, read all of them. Sorry. Um, someone mentioned about Aussie dollar overbought, uh, potentially. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen here. It was looking like there is something creating here, but if this is going to continue, continue higher, then obviously this is not going to be a reversal correction, right? It looks like there's something growing here by a, you know, again, we have to line up with these lower time frame correction with the overall bias, right? So if this bias here is still a up move, then it's not, you know, it's not going to be consistent trying to show here without any other confirmation. Certainly there is something developing here, but is this enough to justify a sell without any other confluence in our eyes, right? So that's something to consider, okay? Again, trading is not right and wrong, it's probability. If any of us just enter a sell here, there's going to be a probability of working out and there's a probability of not working out. We're trying to increase our probability of entries by combining multi time frame analysis, by combining top down approach, by combining uh, patterns within patterns, structures within structures. That's going to raise your percentage of probability of success. It's not going to make it 100%, but it's going to bring up your percentage of entry. Uh, yesterday, when I post my journal, someone asked me about you only get involved with 11 position in a month. How can you do that? Well, it's all about risk management, right? Um, the less trades you take, um, potentially is actually more profit. Right? I always tell everyone, more trades you enter, it does not mean more profit. In fact, more trades you enter is likely to bring down your overall profit because you're entering a lot more trades. They're likely to be mediocre probability percentage trades, so they may or may not help you to bring up your profit. Um, they might eat up your profit. So 
learn to limit and restrict your trades and number of trades, uh, you will see result in your trading very, very soon. So let's continue here. Um, I will go over all these pairs, Canyon, I will go over Kiwi Cat, I will go over that as well. Uh, I'm gonna finish up the Forex first before I jump into the commodities and all that, okay guys? So it has to be in order here. So let's move on here. Um, someone asked about Canyon here. So I think Canyon here could be something, uh, but again, it has to be a little bit more development for me. Now it looks like something is uh, pushing up here, right? Almost to me, this is a structure on its own here. And there's a mini double top here, it looks like. Now, I, again, I want to see more, right? This is kind of what we just went over earlier. What we have seen before, what makes me able to sell this is because it aligns up with the overall, right? The overall price action, we have an impulse and move. We have a larger continuation correction, and we actually created a smaller correction here, right? This is the move that I think a lot of us caught this this either cat yen sell or maybe some other yen sell at this time it was a pretty big play. Now that trade price is kind of consolidating, which is good if you're looking for potential downside because you want to see consolidation. But I don't think, to me personally, is this enough to justify the sell? Not yet because I'm not seeing a better confluence like what I see before. Right? We have seen a large impulse correction impulse. Uh, I'm failing to see what's going on here at this moment. Um, if I want to see a little bit more development, uh, depending on what the price will do, potentially another impulse and down followed by a correction would be better than trying to call this as a potential top. We don't know if this top is going to just push down and then continue higher to this top here. Uh, it's very hard to explain. It's very hard to predict right now. So when there is uh, when there is no uh, right away exact confirmation or something like that I tend to not enter right I tend to leave it alone as you can see I don't really favor any of the yen pairs right now either because a lot of these yen pairs look like it's pushing up and some yen pairs look like it can potentially push down okay so I'm a little bit more neutral on all these yen pairs look like all these yen pairs a lot of these are pushing up right which means the yen pairs are losing strength right look at this how far of a pullback could good because a bearish push down followed by a bullish push up here without really bigger consolidation. Um, it's quite scary or quite, uh, it's very, very hard to right away give an analysis or a perspective prediction on what's going to happen here. So I always encourage, like if it's not something that's going to ring a bell right away in your face to look for a buy and sell, then leave it be, right? Let it correct. We don't need to get involved with every single position. So let's move on here. A uh, couple Kiwi pairs, right? A couple Kiwi pairs that I've been updating everyone since last week and this week midweek market update. I mean, sorry, the trading outlook on Monday. Now I still see a lot of potential on these Kiwi pairs. Um, some of you guys caught the sell here. I don't know if you're still holding the trade, but it looks like it's pushing down very, very well. Again, it's because it's very close to this bottom, so you just have to be very careful whether or not price will break out of this correction here and then continue lower because pound kiwi did that right if we look at pound kiwi here pound kiwi did impulsively break and there is a lower time frame correction uh, i think a couple of you guys got in on this one um i think there's probably likely going to be another consolidation here right and the overall analysis from the high time frame to lower time frame we're looking at this pretty bearish right for a bearish kind of price action to continue uh, just be careful that because we break out, uh, sometimes we might create a bigger correction, a bigger consolidation before the downside, right? So just have to understand uh, price may consolidate or may correct here a little bit longer or whatever that it might be creating even a bigger correction like this. But still the downside move is very promising in my opinion once we zoom out here, understand that uh, overall move here is pretty bearish and we have this consolidation. So a good correctional structure to potentially push the price lower. 
Now I'm going this a little bit quicker because I'm just kind of updating what I mentioned on Monday, right? If you guys watch my Monday uh, outlook, uh, most of these I already talked about. I'm just following up on what I potentially see. Uh, let's talk about Aussie Kiwi. It looks like a lot of you guys are talking about Aussie Kiwi, and I do agree Aussie Kiwi can be something that could be shaped up. Um, some of you guys maybe already got into Aussie Kiwi. Uh, I, I have not, but I am actively looking at this one. Now, if we just zoom out here a little bit on the high time frame. Now, we can see this move is quite sharp to the low here, right? And we kind of hit this bottom here. Now, this is potentially a double bottom. We don't know yet until we develop something here. But you can see there is no other kind of low until the really the maximum the, or the all-time low, really. This is the all-time low. Um, so I don't necessarily think price is going to start dropping, falling like this anymore. What I see here on a lower time frame is that if this is a double bottom that the price is potentially making, we talked about this on Monday, that this is a potential descending structure that the price is making, and we have almost like a smaller descending channel as well. Now, it depends on your plan, of course, but I think if you're looking for entry, um, whether a consolidation here is ideal, or if you want to wait for a consolidation after the breakout, I think that's all fine. That's all up to you and your plan, of course. But I think the upside move is looking a lot more promising or a lot more uh, a lot more confluent uh, to that potential long rather than a sell because of how this corrective move pushed down, double bottom here, and judging by how far the move has pretty much already moved. I right, will move to the top, correct, and we'll move to the bottom again. Potentially, we might, even though we might see something, I mean, a corrective move up, but I do believe uh, a pullback or a consolidation is needed, and this could even be a potential area to kick off another bullish run. So that's something I will be looking at. You can see there are really no other watch lists on these pairs except Aussie Kiwi. I think Aussie Kiwi can shape up something, right? Again, it's all about filtering your trades. You don't need to trade every single pair, right? You just need to focus on a couple ones that are uh, better looking ones, right? Better shape up. And that's going to increase your probability of success. <clears throat> so that's Aussie Kiwi. Um, something that I'll be looking at for you know a couple of days, next couple of days, or see how this goes. Now we can move on to other ones. Uh, I'm kind of zoom out here. If any other ones have any other pair, want me to take a look on forex pairs? Uh, forex pair, please let me know your direction and what you're looking at quickly, so I can kind of browse through them really quickly. Pound Aussie, Euro Aussie. Um, I think I talk about this on Monday. I would prefer the Kiwi pairs than Aussie pairs, but they are pushing down nevertheless. So if you're in the trade, good job on your part, right? We talked about uh, since last week why I personally, just me personally, why I would favor Euro Kiwi over Euro Aussie and favor Pound Kiwi over Pound Aussie. Uh, it's just the price action. It's just my filtering process. I recognize there is double top here, right? But Euro Kiwi ultimately has a better price action double top here. We're in an actual consolidation after a bearish move down, right? So if I have to choose one of them, I would definitely choose Euro Kiwi over Euro Aussie, even though they likely to move down together because of Aussie and Kiwi correlation. And the same thing with Pound Aussie, right? Pound Aussie here, to me, uh, it is pushing down, right? It is certainly a bearish kind of trend. Uh, but I thought Pound Kiwi had a little bit better price action, and I wanted to get involved with Pound Kiwi instead. But uh, to me, uh, this is at this low here. It's pushing down, which is good. So you just have to be careful. Uh, is this going to be a kind of a pullback here to create a head and shoulder? Or if it's just going to break down here and further correction to go lower? So just be careful at this low here, because sometimes price may create or pull back to form a bigger correction. Right, but the down move is still there, right? It's just it's just correcting the price here and then push preparing the price for another push down, just like a consolidation here. Okay, so be careful if you're in the position uh, on Pound on Aussie and uh, Euro Aussie wise. Well, Euro Aussie is pushing down, same as Euro Kiwi, right? Uh, but I don't see anything at this moment. Uh, I wouldn't recommend selling here either. 
after the price has already pushed down quite a bit, I probably expect something a bigger consolidation before the next move. Like if it creates something like this after a sharp move down, uh, I think potentially you can uh, carry the, or uh, continue the bearish trend. But other than that, uh, I think they're relatively going to be the same, right? If we look at Aussie Kiwi and Kiwi, Aussie Swiss and Kiwi Swiss, they are inverse related to pretty much Euro Aussie and Euro Kiwi, right? So um, we do see the potential up move in, key, in Aussie strength and Kiwi strength as well, if we take a look at these couple ones. So Kiwi Swiss here also, right? We had the sharp move up, sharp move down, and sharp move up. Can we continue all of this continuation correction and then give us further upside? That is up for the price to give us, right? We can know what's going to happen here. Uh, it may or may not continue higher, or it may create the same kind of reversal here on the top of the overall correction. Look at this and then see how far price pushed down and look at how uh, Euro dollar works when it forms, right? Something like that, we, we, we wouldn't know what will happen. This is why I'm trying to let everyone understand is we wouldn't know if this is going to be a move that just kind of push down and then continue upwards, or we'll, we'll, we don't know if the move will be something like this and then all the way drop down to the low. We have no idea when we see something like this. That's why we have to manage it accordingly. It's all a probability sense, right? I take the same exit here on Kiwi Swiss, and it's the same exit here on Euro dollar, right? It's the same thing on top of the overall structure, head and shoulder, right? So what has worked out for me on the last Kiwi Swiss position, and I'm doing the same on Euro dollar, it's simple, right? I don't need to worry about potential profit loss. Uh, I think a lot of traders misunderstood. When you're in a trade, all your profit is what we call unrealized profit, right? It's called unrealized profit. Your broker will say unrealized profit because you haven't exited the position. Once you exit the position, all that profit is realized. So you understand you, whatever profit you are while you're in the trade, it's not likely you're going to end up with the same profit because sometimes you can end up with more, right? And sometimes you can end up with less. So don't let that defeat you. I found a lot of traders felt like, well, at one point, let's say my profit reached this, right? Maybe they're at, let's say, I just say 3%, as an example, and they end up exiting for 2.5%, and they're upset that they didn't exit at 3%. Well, no, because those are unrealized profit, and you wouldn't have no idea what will happen. What if the price continued to push up, and you exit here, and then now you get more upset in yourself? So learn to control that aspect of trading, because it is something that you cannot control. And don't let social media fool you, right? A lot of people tend to, you know, say they enter here, exit here, uh, with no other no other things to back up. You can only enter something when the confluence is stacking up now, and you can only exit something when it stacks against you, right? So learn to understand whatever you catch is whatever you catch, right? You're not always gonna be buying from the bottom. You're not always gonna be selling at the top here. So please put the long or short. I went over pound Aussie, Euro Aussie, uh, dollar yen. I already went over that earlier. So Euro pound. Um, I'm really having a hard time to see what's going to be happening here. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, you guys should put a long or short on what direction you guys are looking at. Uh, please put long or short so it's easier to do analysis. And I would like to hear your 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 analysis on the pair as well. So I'll go over the ones that is listed out pound yen buy. Now uh, a lot of yen pairs are more neutral, right? I think I mentioned this on Monday as well. I'm not really seeing much development here on a lot of price. Uh, you could argue that there is some sort of correction here. But I don't think this is enough to justify a sell, at least from my point of view, at this given stage, right? This can continue to correct. We don't know how far this correction will go. If it does push down from the price, so if we consolidate here a little bit longer, push down the price and then continue, I think that would be more of a sell. Uh, I'm not really seeing the buyer, I'm not really seeing the sell at the given moment. I just kind of point out what I would like to do if I, if I see a sell opportunity. But at this given range, I'm more neutral. Uh, 
As long as price doesn't break this neckline, I think I'm fairly neutral on this area. I don't really see uh, any confluence at this given moment. Okay, and now compared to other yen pairs, there's few yen pairs that are just going to kind of bullishly push up, right? Like Aussie and Kiwi, and they're pretty much bullishly pushing up as well. So it kind of just makes me more neutral on the overall yen pairs. Um, dollar cat, yeah, dollar cat. I mentioned this on Monday, kind of what I'm looking at here for what the price will do. Um, I'm more favorable, I'm more favoring a sell here. I'm kind of more favoring like what the price can do. Is this a head and shoulder kind of creation? Is this even a structure here right now, or it's just a sideways consolidation? Uh, very hard to determine at this, at this given moment. While we all like the bearish move down, I think this is a good bearish move down, but we're not seeing too much here developing except maybe a head and shoulder pattern, and we don't know if this is a correction on its own or this is something else. So this area, I feel it needs a little bit more development. Not likely to enter anything at this given moment. I want to see a little bit more development here. Maybe we're going to see a bigger consolidation, right? Maybe we can create a bigger structure like this then you know selling from the top here would be ideal uh, so again but that takes time for the price to kind of consolidate and correct a little bit more right so uh, but for me right now it's not ready to sell at the moment drawing panel this is not a drawing panel this is a favor so go to your left you have your drawing panel on your left, everybody does. What you do is you need to select the one that you want it to be in your favor, star it. So look at my left chart here. You have to add to favor, right? This is a favor. So you need to click, put whatever one you want to use, favor it, and then it will appear in my favor drawing tool. I don't use much drawing tool at all. These are only the ones I use, right? So you can favor them and you can be, it will be a, a, a bar on the top moving forward. I always said take profit order, but a much higher. Well, I don't want to choke the price. If you guys recall my Euro dollar take profit was up here, uh, but obviously I manage it accordingly. Uh, because in this case, um, when the price does break out, then I wanted to hold the trade and look for it on the upside, right? But um, it's up to you, of course. Uh, I personally set a that's I always set my target, my second target. Uh, if you watch my videos, I always talk about target one, target two kind of thing. Uh, I always set a target two, and then I will kind of observe when the price does hit target one. If it's going to continue or if it's going to reverse, if it's going to reverse, then, you know, I'll exit the trade accordingly, right? If it's going to break up, then I'm going to leave the target where it is. Uh, Aussie Cat, yeah, Aussie Cat is pushing up. Uh, I think some of you guys may be going on the buy here. I'm not sure. Uh, looks like there is this kind of descending structure. We're pushing up now. I think the only thing you need to worry about is we're at this potential high. Uh, potential high here. You want to see price either break above the high and continue, right? That's what you want to see. Now, I think we talk about this uh, potential buy for a while. Uh, I personally, I think it took a loss here, if I can recall. Uh, it's just that the price wasn't ready at this time, but it looks like we're just breaking this previous low. Now there is a bullish out move, which is good, right? Now, if you're in the trade here, if you're in the trade from here, uh, all I think about is just worry about, uh, just be careful at this top. But it looks like it is bullishly pushing up, which is a good thing, right? So if it can continue higher, then expect the next high to be uh, another potential high for a target. So uh, I think that's it, guys. Any other ones that I missed? Dollar yen we talk about, right? Um, 
potentially looking at this structure. And I mentioned this in the beginning, I want to see actually price break out this and continue now because I did take uh, a loss here. I did take a loss here on end of August and I did take a break even here. So I'm a little bit more extra cautious now with dollar yen here uh, after taking a loss here and break even here. So I'm going to be a little bit more uh, on the sideline for this one. I want to wait for a price to actually complete this structure here and then potentially get back involved when I see a continuation of here after. So let's move on if there's no other Kiwi pairs. I uh, went over Kiwi yen already. Um, like I said, I don't, while I see it's a bullish move, but there is no entries. Um, it's up to you, of course, if you identify these are entries, totally it's up to your plan. But because we're at this top here, right, and there is no solid kind of continuation, at least from a bigger perspective, right, there's certainly going to be correction here on like a five minute chart or something, obviously. Right, but I don't I'm failing to see any bigger correction right now. And we're already at this top here, so I'm a little bit more uh, on the sideline for this one. I don't want to just start entering buy or sell. I need to see a little bit more development. Usually this is the area where we're gonna see you know price action. We're gonna see either bearish reversal or we're just gonna see a breakout and then continue after. But at this given stage, there's no point buying. There is no nothing, there is no correction, right? There is no structure. At this top here, yep. Yeah, I went over pound yen as well earlier. You just have to scroll up a little bit. I went over pound yen buy as well. I'm more neutral. Like I said, I'm more seeing a sell rather than a buy at this given moment, but I'm not going to sell this either. I'm, even if I consolidate and break down, then I'll potentially consider, but I'm not really seeing the buy. And I feel like to see this overall kind of price right now. Uh, to me, there is a larger potential head and shoulder, but before we break down this low, there is nothing for a potential sell yet. But I don't see the buy here. I Personally, I really don't see any buy correction or buy movement. It's moving up, of course, but where is the entry, right? We need to find entry. We're not just going to blindly enter without you know, confirmation of a correction or structure. So let's move on now. Let's move on now. Almost. Uh, let's move on to commodities now. Uh, some of you guys are asking about oil. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at oil. And if I'm correct, you guys, um, but are you guys shorting oil or long oil? Right? Are you guys in oil for long or in oil for short? Uh, personally, I'm uh, more thinking oil is making this consolidation here. But I think I went over this on Monday. Is that are we going to get an inverse head and shoulder, like a correction or consolidation here to push the higher, or are we going to get a further downside? To me, at this time, <clears throat> I'm not really seeing any much here. I'm not really seeing much here developing. I think this is more of an inverse head and shoulder. So if they consolidate here a little bit longer, uh, it looks more to me as an up move other than a sell move. Now, um, there is not much developing here except that, I think. Now, you might think there is maybe a sell here, and I agree if you're looking at maybe the lower time frame here. Like if you see this as a potential structure, and I do agree, yes, but I when I factor in what's going on here is that you have an impulse and we're pushing down. You have a reversal impulse up, right? So an impulse down, reversal impulse up. Uh, even though this looks like an ascending like kind of structure, but it can continue to correct into a continuation for a bullish run, right? 
So this is something that I will try myself to not get involved because while I do see probably the same ascending channel like you see, but I'm factoring in what's going on the overall price, I'm factoring in what's going on on the overall kind of higher time frame, and the sell doesn't, to me, is not looking as clean, but something like this can happen as well. But like, don't get me wrong, like everything is a probability. We have a push down, we have a push up. It's forming the same kind of ascending channel, potentially like the one that we have here, and this one did push down, right? So, but uh, I'm more kind of like conflicting in my mind here with the overall price. So when it's a little bit conflicting, uh, I tend to stay out of it. I don't have any bias here. I'm more neutral. I'm just going to develop, wait for a little bit more development here. But that is my plan, by the way, right? So uh, if you have different alternative, if you see it differently, of course, you need to uh, follow your plan. It's probably better, right? I've always, I suggest everyone to follow your own analysis and plan, right? You can kind of look at others and have an opinion on them, but uh, ultimately your trading account, your trading plan. <coughs> Let's look at silver here. Um, some of you guys are asking about silver. Um, I did get all the silver here. Right? Uh, my reasoning, which I'll update in the recap video is that on Tuesday morning, we had this really odd kind of price action, right? On Tuesday, we have, during the, before the New York session, price pushed to the downside, and then sharp move to the upside, right? When I saw this, this is the time when I woke up, when I saw a sharp move like this, and then I see another sharp move down, uh, I'm basically just uh, having none of it, really. I'm just like, well, I'm going to take a break even on dollar yen, uh, and I got a position on euro dollar as well, right? So uh, to me, at the time, um, Dollar yen was entered on the same day, but silver I entered uh, from Friday last week, right? So there is a few costs associated, right? When you hold a position, when you hold a contract for difference for a few days. So I just decided that I'm going to move on my stop loss to about the same area where I dropped, uh, secure a little bit of profit, cover that part of the expense, and I will move on after. Uh, now that even if I don't do that, I would get tagged out for a break even anyways. But now that price is looking like it's forming or completing this structure here, right? We're just getting a larger structure. That's all, right? If we just expand this structure here, and then we're basically seeing a larger structure, right? So that's a go again, right? And I always talk about uh, when we manage our trade. Just because we get out of the position, right? Just because I exit the position, you know, for a break even or for a little bit of profit, it doesn't mean I cannot get back into a position after, right? We can always get back into a position with a correction finish. And if a consolidation finish here, then I can easily get back into a position to uh, get back in, right? So. So that's what I will kind of wait for and kind of just see if this consolidation will finish here. Uh, I think if we break out here and then consolidate here, I might consider another entry. We'll see how this one goes, but that is for now for silver. Uh, I do see a potential here, but I will look to get back in if we do get uh, a better price action. If we do have a breakout and then lower time frame consolidation, I think that's fine. If that fits your plan, of course, we completed this structure here. We impulse all, we create another correction here, right? So this could all be good, all good for us to look for a buy. Now, if we look at gold here, gold is a little bit struggling here. Uh, we talk about gold when it breaks out of this kind of the current structure we had from the double bottom here. Price is breaking up now, and basically we're just seeing if this consolidation here will continue pushing the price up. Now you can see it's a little bit struggling here, well, a little bit bearish kind of price action. To me, it's, all this is telling me that there is consolidation here, uh, and this consolidation is not over yet, right? So it's all about being patient here. Um, yesterday, I got this message that, I got this message on Instagram, a guy messaged me and he was like, oh, I like your post, but I got my account is blow out from gold from yesterday. And I was just like, oh, why, right? 
and then he and then I realized there was a lot of volatility going on here during New York sessions, and that likely be the reason. I didn't really ask in detail, but um, again, it's risk management, everyone, right? We need to understand you're not over risking, you're not over trading, you're not over leverage your account. Um, most traders, when they get into the trading industry, that is tend to what they do, right? But it's all a learning curve, right? If you blow an account or two, if you blow several accounts, um, it is part of the learning curve, right? I blow account before when I was in the beginning of trading journey, but did you learn from it? Did you accept that that was your mistake? Did you accept that that was your decision? Or did you still blame the market? Did you still blame the brokers? Did you still blame your strategy and your mentor? Are you still playing the blaming game? Or are you recognize that everything you do in trading is your decision? The only person you should blame is yourself because you couldn't control your emotion and your expectation, uh, your greed, your fear of missing out. All that is up to you to recognize. And then if you recognize them, then the next time when you get back into trading, you will recognize those issues and problems, and you'll try your best not to make the same mistakes. It's that simple, right? It's like any job, any profession, you learn by making mistakes and you so that you won't make the same mistake again. All right. Yeah, silver buy, silver buy, yes. So let's continue here. Um, I don't have too much on indices to go over. Uh, it's the same as Monday, guys. I really don't see too much here because I mentioned many times my bias is a sell, right? My bias on indices is a potential sell if I get some sort of reversal price action on the top. And I like how, let's say like S&P 500, it is kind of consolidating here. It's not pushing up like, the aggressive push up and correction. So that shows you that there is something going on here. Uh, we can even potentially start correcting in this formation to the top here and then they drop down. Uh, this is basically what the price is showing every time when they're in the bigger consolidation, every time when it hit the price, it drops, right? And it hit the top, it drops. So certainly another possibility here, if we do get the price correct to the top and then the right bearish reversal price action, that's something that I want to get involved in, right? I'm not getting involved into any buy position. Uh, maybe some of you guys are into these short-term buys, and I think that's fine if it fits your fits your plan and perspective. But I personally is only looking for sell if it does develop into the right bearish price action here. Okay. <clears throat> Now, now, I don't have too much other indices on watch unless you guys have anything you want me to take a look on the indices sections. But I don't have too much on watch here. So let's move on here to crypto now. Last one to go over. Last one to go over. I just want to go over a few pairs that I talked about on Monday. Uh, I want to start with, uh, we went over Ripple, right? Ripple is the only position that I am currently in. Um, I'm very happy to just kind of wait it out and see what happens. I, I, uh, to be honest, at one point, I almost got tagged out here, but I'm still alive. Uh, that's happening happened to me too a couple times now. Uh, I just set the stop loss below the low, right? And I set the stop loss below the left shoulder here. Uh, basically almost got pegged out and then kind of start recovering now. But my stop loss here is still at 1% loss. Uh, I'm still, because crypto, it sometimes it gets volatile. It gets create bigger correction and go. I'm fine risking 1%. Uh, I don't need to secure 1%. In fact, I haven't really hit 1% maybe at this one point, but I haven't really break out of the structure here. So uh, it just doesn't make sense for now to put it to break even at least with the given current price action, maybe it will develop into something later that would change my perspective. 
But as of now, I'm happily uh, holding this. Uh, I think it's looking pretty, pretty clean. I like how we have that descending structure here after the crypto crash. Descending structure, pushing the price, and then an impulse up. And this is a larger correction that we're currently in. Now, there is definitely a small possibility that this can move down once more, right? If it does, and if it doesn't break the lower, if I start having a bullish reversal, uh, I would get back in, into the same position. Right, so all about planning and perspective. We do have a few swing highs and few swing lows already, and we do have some good bullish price action, but it doesn't guarantee nothing, right? We can just hit the top of the trend line, push down once more, and then reverse back up once again. That's something that we have seen a lot as well, right? So making it multiple touches and then the bullish push up afterwards. So that's Ripple. Uh, I think Dogecoin, I talked about this as well. So Dogecoin from Monday, we mentioned about price has already pushed up quite a bit already for my previous analysis. And then basically we're forming into a bigger, larger correction, just like Ripple, right? This is a strong bullish price to upside and naturally price needs to correct, right? Price is correcting in this larger correction. We have the same inverse hand shoulder, this right shoulder is kind of extended. It's kind of more here looking like a flag now, but I think the ultimate goal here is if it can break above and then continuation, I think that's the fine looking for an entry like this. Kiwi Yen, I went over a few times already, so you can scroll back in front, but Kiwi Yen to me is um, fairly neutral. Um, so uh, if I have time after, we can get back into a few positions. I just want to go over uh, my market outlook on crypto and then we can have time for Q&A. Um, not seeing too much on Bitcoin, not seeing too much on Bitcoin, except that I still reasonably see this move is pretty bullish, uh, except what's going to happen here. Now we can easily have another push down for the price here before our move, so kind of watch out for a bullish continuation. Now, different people have different opinions. This is why trading is trading, right? Some people may see this as a potential ascending structure and they, uh, they might think this can be a push down for the price. Yeah, nothing wrong with that, right? Remember, trading is all individual. It's all your perspective, right? While some people may see this as a potential long and some people might see a potential short, uh, it's up to you, right? It's up to you individually to identify you know, your analysis and what to look for enter. And sometimes if it's not something that shapes up right away, then just leave it be, right? You don't need to always come to a conclusion or buy itself. If it doesn't, then leave it be, then watch for more of, watch for more development. Now something that I am looking at here is Binance Coin. So Binance Coin did reverse from the bottom that I point out here, right? After this impulse of down, there is a reversal structure here. We basically push the price up and we push it above this high, which is the high that I mentioned we should watch out for. Now that we broke the high here, there is consolidation here. This is very good because this is likely to be another bullish consolidation to potentially push up to the all-time high. So that's something that I will be looking at for you know next couple of days. I think I like how we it's I like how the impulse down is corrected and then reverse upwards. So something here is significant for a continuation. All right, uh, other than that, I do see Cardano is still on my watch list. Cardano, I uh, mentioned this on Monday as well. It looks like they were forming that correction I talked about. So this could be a possible entry. Um, I would prefer though, if we can like, create a bigger consolidation, another corrective move down, and then up move here, and then now we basically created a bigger consolidation here to correct this big up move, right? This big up move has already been pushing up massively already. So it's just logically to think that we need a bigger consolidation before the next up move, right? Uh, certainly a correction here, it is possible to push hover, right? It's just a probability, but, um, Preferably from, you know, backtesting from experience wise, a bigger correction here will validate this overall move as bullish and a consolidation here to lead to the next up move. Okay, I have a lot of faith or a lot of, um, I don't want to say hope, I have a lot of positive 
expectation of Cardano anyways from how the price has been if I make it into log right if you look at how far Cardano has been going up uh, I think it's perfect to continue to see this bullish trend if it does happen and looking to hold it for a long term right so So that is it for me in terms of updates. Um, I think Bitcoin Cash, someone asked me about Bitcoin Cash. I think there's something going on here as well, right? We have a double bottom here. Strong impulse of move. Looks like there is a consolidation here. So if this consolidation eventually finish, uh, if it does you know, break to the outside, then I think this is likely to be another odd move from the price. And I like how what I'm seeing here, if I zoom out here, uh, there's quite a bit of room to upside even at the top here and if we look at the higher time frame we're not close to you know the much higher that we, the price has been in the past right so there is some potential here right there is some potential here on the higher time frame as well so I uh, thought I'd update this one uh, according to someone asked me about uh, but other than that, um, not much else is on my watch. Uh, I do see a few of them, you know, in that same kind of correction like Bitcoin Cash, right? Same double bottom, same impulse and move, and same kind of consolidation. So that could be a plus. Uh, Ethereum also, I forgot to update this one. Uh, Ethereum is also pushing up right from the bottom like I talked about. And we broke this high here. And we broke this previous high here. And price is moving sideways, right? But it's not too ascending like it looks like we could potentially break out here. And if the breakout followed by a consolidation here can easily lead to another push up to potentially all time high here, right? So that's it for me on crypto. Uh, any crypto pairs that you guys want me to take a look um, or not? In NASDAQ, I already went over earlier, my friend. So I already went over this NASDAQ. Um, I mentioned about I'm only looking for selling opportunity. I'm really not looking for buy. Now, if, like I said, everything will be uh, my analysis is always on the sell if it shapes up, right? I'm not just entering sell for no reason. I will only change my sell bias if you know if they start consolidating here, break up, and then bigger consolidation to go higher. When this happens, then everything I talk about here is not applicable anymore. But unless that happens, if it's just going to start consolidating here a little bit longer, then I'm looking for the sell, right? Because the sell is much, much, much better and the buy when you start seeing a larger correction. That is what we look for all the time in price. It's when you're looking for uh, consolidation, we're looking for previous similar price action structures and patterns, right? This is from COVID and price dropped very, very harsh. Uh, we can reasonably expect similar thing can happen. It doesn't necessarily mean we'll drop all the way down, but it's the same kind of price action correction that is more leaning towards a reversal rather than a continuation okay so my bias again is looking for the sell i'm not looking for buy here even if it consolidate here it could consolidate push up and what if it just start reversing back down and form this right so at the top here i'm always watching out for bearish price action rather than um rather than a bullish kind of price action here <clears throat> LTC, yeah, let's go over a few more crypto like you guys are saying. Uh, yeah, I do agree Litecoin is also pushing up. Talk about this. It's the same reversal, right? Same reversal price action here. And then price is pushing up. It's not as aggressive like a couple other ones that we have seen that was able to break the previous high. But I think it's the same idea here. There is consolidation here. There is a consolidation here. Uh, consolidation here could lead to the next up move. If it does, then further upside is very, very likely, right? So, uh, dot USD, yeah. Um, I mean, dot USD does look like it's pushing out very aggressively as well, right? Originally, same kind of bias here. 
uh, at the time I thought this would be a continuation to go higher, but we all have that crypto crash. After the crypto crash, what did it do? Fall into a falling wedge and then it gets squeezed out here. Now we're basically breaking above this high, which is good. So if this consolidation here, I think this is a good potential up move, right? Depends on how far this correction will push you a price, but it's very likely to push it to all time high again. Uh, Uni USD, yeah, um, same idea, right? It has the ascending channel. We have that crypto crash. We fall into a higher time frame kind of descending structure, and then we reverse up. And it looks like there is a continuation correction here. So, uh, if you're liking this kind of price action, if you have an entry for something like this, then I think it's fine. The overall direction here is likely to be bullish and potentially reaching the all-time high again. You're welcome. So that is what I see on any other crypto before I jump back to some Q and A's and maybe some pairs that I miss. Okay, so Apple, yeah, uh, I think we talked about Apple on Monday, if we, if I recall, we talked about Monday, right? Um, like I mentioned on Monday, there's a possibility of a, there's a possibility of a reversal from this, and I mentioned about this important area, is if this correction doesn't reverse, then I don't expect this to reverse. So basically, it looks like it's breaking up, but it's still within the correction, right? We always understand that. Even if this breaks up like this, uh, but unless it's followed by continuation, it can easily just retrace back up and continue lower. All right, so I think this area here is super crucial. This overall price here is looking like it's a ascending structure where we are used to this kind of price action where there can be a possible reversal. But nothing here is on the lower time frame has indicated that yet, right? We can, you know, we can address this or whatever, but um, unless this breaks down and then continue, then we can't be sure if this larger correction is going to be a reversal. So be a little bit more patient and wait for this area here to complete and then potentially kick off this potential sell. So that's Apple here. Um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, I did go over those already. Uh, Bitcoin, I'm more bullish, at least from my point of view, right? I talked about this earlier. Um, I think this bullish move up is kind of defines where Bitcoin can go. Right? We did have this break off from the price, right? So this is a confirmed um, reversal, right? After this bearish move down, this correction leads to this push up basically shows you that this is a bullish reversal. So after this bullish reversal, I'm basically all I'm looking for is, is there going to be further continuation, right? If this move down correctively once more, and then potentially break up from this structure here that it's currently in. And this move is still pretty sharp, even if this pulls back or maybe forms into a deeper consolidation. Uh, to me, I'm still looking at this as a more bullish kind of price action. The whole point is because this correction is a reversal, right? We have to understand what's going on here. Uh, after the price initially pushed down, uh, there's a lot of people here buying and selling, buying and selling, and that's why there is consolidation. But after the consolidation completes, uh, we did see this bullish impulse and move breaking above, breaking above this previous high. So this is, to me, a reversal structure. And after a reversal, if it's followed by some sort of continuation price action, then we can expect the next up move from the price. Ethereum went over this a little bit beginning as well. Uh, same idea after that bearish push down from the price, price falls into that reversal kind of descending structure, right? Descending structure here. 
uh, we did see the price impulse heat break to the upside, which is all good because we're looking for bullish confirmation. Now that price breaks this high here, uh, you know, uh, some people saw this as a semi channel, but I think this is just overall consolidation here. Now that price is breaking above, I think a further upside, further correction will eventually help the price to reach the all time high here. Gold, we went over this earlier, uh, similar like silver, uh, I think silver had a little bit better price action. Now silver, I talked about uh, exit the position here and waiting for a larger correction here to potentially get back in. If it does push up and smaller correction, I think that's fine. Uh, gold will be the same thing, but gold is consolidated here a little bit more. So just be careful. Uh, I talked about the story that I got from yesterday. Someone mentioned they lost their account while gold went up in here a little bit. Uh, to me, this is just a larger consolidation. So let the price consolidate. And to me, the upside looks more promising, right? Because it basically shows you that you're in a larger correction, uh, impulsive move, larger correction back to this double bottom here. We have an impulse lead break, so a correction or a continuation correction can lead to the upside, but we don't know how deep or how long this consolidation will go, so be careful here. But the overall bias here is definitely long, right? The overall higher time frame bias is the long. You just have to be careful what's going on here on the lower time frame. Eurozy went over this earlier as well. I don't favor Eurozy over Pound Aussie. I think Pound Aussie was slightly better. Sorry, I don't favor Euro Aussie over Euro Kiwi. That's what I was going to say. Like I want to choose the Kiwi pairs over the Aussie pairs. Uh, in that case, in my opinion, I think Euro Kiwi is slightly better. Euro Aussie has a double top, right? And price did push down. So that's all good from a bearish perspective. But it's... You know, at this consolidation rate, I don't suggest selling here. Like, even if it forms a correction, I think the move dropped quite a bit already. So you're going to have to expect sometimes price will create bigger consolidation, right, before the next down move. And you don't want to get caught in the consolidation phase again. Um, whereas Euro Kiwi was better price action because we have the same top, but we're in that larger correction I talked about, right, all the way from the top here, right? This was a massive impulsive move. This is a larger continuation correction. And there is further lower time frame kind of price movement. So I would favor Euro Kiwi over Euro Aussie. And if that does break out followed by correction, then I'm definitely going to get involved with Euro Kiwi. But at this time, I don't think there is an entry here on Euro Aussie. And I don't think there is buy and sell at this given time, even if it forms a correction here. Uh, that is not something I will look to get involved in. SLP USD. Um, I don't really see too much here. It's actually your first time looking at this chart or this crypto um, probably potentially is a potential double bottom here. Uh, price is moving down quite correctively, but that's not enough for me to justify anything. I think the justifiable here is if the price can break out and continue upwards. That is the only thing I see, but even that, uh, this move is pushing down quite a bit already. So it has to be something that is a strong impulsive break and followed by a bullish correction for me to consider something like this. But I don't even trade this pair, uh, I don't even trade this cryptocurrency or anything. So just strictly from a price action point of view, uh, this bottom here may or may not be a double bottom, right? So we have to be waiting for the confirmation. We're not just going to be buying here for no reason. We need to wait for a double bottom to be clear. We need to wait for a descending channel to be clear. We need to wait for an impulsive break to be clear and then a continuation correction to be clear to the next upside. But if those conditions are not met, I'm not looking to get involved. Uh, 
Uh, vet. Yeah, I can take a look at vet. Um, it's the same kind of correction we have seen, right? We see this bearish push down from the price after the COVID drop, right? COVID drop. We fall into this kind of a falling wedge or a decent structure where it's getting squeezed. The price is getting squeezed into a point. And we have this inverse head and shoulder if you notice price action. This is the beauty about understanding multi type analysis is when you see a larger structure potentially completing, right? That will bottom here, a few swing highs and a few swing lows. And if you dig into the lower time frame here, you clearly see an inverse head and shoulder as well. So inverse head and shoulder impulsive break and then bullish continuation to the upside and to me this is going to be a continuation correction the only thing that is something you should be considered of is this previous high that price hasn't break above right certainly this can be a correction that just continue upwards and go upwards uh, but you need to be careful because of where this previous high is at right this is a previous high price usually needs to break this previous high to confirm the next bullish run okay yeah so qe yen um went over this a couple of times i'm not too i'm more like like i said i'm more neutral on qe yen i don't see much development here all I see is that there is a potential double top, and right? there is a potential double top. That's all I see, right? How this proof push is pushing up very aggressively. So I'm really not seeing any sell or buy. Um, there is nothing developing here on the lower time frame for a possible sell. Uh, to me, there is no correction. Sorry, I mean, it's no correction structure. I mean, you could try to do this, but I don't think that is what is going on here. I think this move is quite sharp to the upside. So what it's likely to do is there is going to be probably consolidation, but to me, this is likely to form into more of a bullish price action rather than a reversal. It all depends, right? So at this given moment, it's obviously nothing here to work with. But if this is a double top, if this move pushes down, followed by a correction, a bearish correction, then the double top is valid and potentially there is downside but all this is all speculation all i see here right now is just a potential top this might not even be a top because price can just consolidate here and break above so i'm not sure what you guys are seeing but this is definitely not something that i would trade or be on my watch list there is just better pairs to get involved with pound dollar in a bullish parallel channel I'm not sure what bullish channel is. Maybe you can share me with a screenshot, but I'm not. Maybe you see it differently. Obviously, it's hard to just draw in structures what other people are seeing. But uh, I do agree, or I'm more leaning towards more of a bullish view rather than a bearish view. Even though this is looking similarly, like what pound yen, right? Pound yen, we talk about this. But pound yen, I talk about also that I would like to see the price break this low. Uh, even, a, even if a consolidation here and break lower followed by another correction here, uh, that's still something that I will consider but not guarantee to enter. Uh, but same thing with pound dollar here, there is something going on here, but even if this pushes down, it's not something that I would look to get involved in. Uh, I'm more favoring the potential up move, right? but I'm not really seeing much here. Um, Maybe one can argue this is an inverse and a shoulder, and it is. Uh, but other than that, um, I'm not seeing too, too much, at least from my point of view. But I do favor a bullish view. I do like this is a bottom that the price is basically failing to push lower, right? If you look at this, this was my low that the price can push. And I understand that if it doesn't break this low and continue, this is pretty much the low that the price is basically setting on right and more to me is the overall price action to me now looks more bullish with a bullish correction with this kind of continuation up move and this is looking more kind of a bullish correction um, but of course depending on how the price will form here on the lower time frame 
And this is also a potential pop for the price is at as well, right? So while I do think there is a potential bullish up move, uh, we also need to be careful, just like a couple other ones I pointed out, price um, would be a lot better if it breaks above the high and continue, right? All right, so any other question or the Q&A or any other things that I missed in the beginning? I apologize. Uh, I think there was some issue with the sound. So I apologize uh, that I didn't go over. I mean, I mean uh, caused a little bit of trouble there. Um, uh, let me see what else is something that I missed. Uh, Kiwi Cat, right? Sorry, I, whoever it is still on, I missed Kiwi Cat. Now, um, Aussie Cat push up, right? We talk about Aussie Cat, and I do agree Aussie Cat does look bullish if we get bullish consolidation, but this is a previous high again that the price is at, so you need to be careful. Um, Kiwi Cat, however, I'm more leaning towards this kind of scenario, is uh, more leaning towards that there is something going on here. Now, if we guys recall from my previous, previous, and where Kiwi Cat basically dropped down uh, really, really sharp here, um, I'm able to catch some of this move if I recall. Now, I think the consolidation here could lead to another bullish run. So this is different than Aussie Cat. Now, usually they are quite similar, right? They're quite similar when it comes to price, um, when the price development, things like that. But I thought Kiwi Cat here, uh, I could kind of argue that this is potentially a, cons a sideway kind of channel or fact kind of consolidation. And if we're reaching to this high here, if there is some bearish price action here, I think a sell here would make sense. So it's a little bit different than Aussie Cat, but I think I need a lot more development here. Some sort of ascending channel, some sort of head and shoulder, some sort of double top. Uh, it might be a double top here already, but I need to see shock shorts here. I need to see price action here to give us a little bit more confirmation that this could be a down move and then correction and then go lower. But until I see that, I'm going to just kind of observe what happened here. Can I look at silver? Yeah, uh, I went over silver a few times. Uh, I do like what's going on silver. Uh, I did exit my day position, right? I did exit my position, but I can easily get back into it if I see a good price action developing, right? Um, basically, what I see after this push off of the price is that we basically create another continuation. This is all good, right? So we have impulse and move. Corruption, impulsive move, corruption. So can we get another corruption here once we break up? I think there's still a lot of room to the upside. So while I pick a little bit profit, uh, I can easily get back in. This is a uh, good thing about risk management is that at the time when I exit the trade, I wouldn't know what will happen. I remember we can never predict the market. Right, this could easily just push down all the way to low, and I would just take a loss here. I don't want to do that, right? So I take a profit here. But as the price continues to develop more and more and more, it's basically completing this structure that we're seeing right now. Right, so this is all good because now that we understand there is more bullish opportunities, there's more bullish momentum, then I can easily try to uh, get back into a position if a consolidation happens and get back in, right? Because the overall move doesn't change from the higher time frame, right? We talked about this. The down move has already ended, in my opinion. It pushed to the downside, hitting this low, creating a larger structure, and the up move is slowly, potentially moving up. So I'll be kind of waiting to see a little bit more consolidation. If it's going to do here, that would be okay. Or if it does just kind of break up and form a consolidation, it's fine by me as well. Please call me for me, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, is that, is that loud for you guys? <laughs> it's like someone's, uh, it's, it's like my neighbor's home, right? Uh, it's probably their alarm or something. <laughs> no 
Okay, so any other question, boys and girls? Any other last minute question for me? Uh, I think I went over all the players that you guys mentioned. I'm just like scrolling back to uh, I'm scrolling back to all the comments and messages. I apologize, Sam was not working. Uh, but I'll hopefully get that all sorted out for next week. Um, and uh, I'm just scrolling back on YouTube as well to see any comments I missed or any messages that I missed as well. And let's see, uh, the Kiwi. So like I said, the only thing really I'm watching, uh, my next over, I can still keep an eye on this. Uh, what, the only thing that I'm watching from pairs wise is Aussie Kiwi. I think Aussie Kiwi can be something. Uh, I think I saw some of you guys maybe got it from the bottom as well, so I think that's good. Now, for me personally, I was just looking for a little bit more confirmation if it does. So, if it forms a consolidation here, uh, I might consider depending on what the price do. But I think also if it breaks above uh, and forms a consolidation here, it would be more better because that gives you an idea that this structure is finished and the double bottom here can lead to another up move from the price. But depending on your plan, of course, obviously this will be like a reversal entry because we're reversing from this structure. It's a little bit more dangerous. Uh, if you wait for a correction of the breakout, then it's less risky, right? But less reward in this case. Euro cat, um, yeah, same idea with like dollar cat and pound cat that some of you guys have pointed out is I'm more looking at the cat, is it going to gain strength? Yeah, Euro cat, it's like the same with Euro Aussie when I mentioned is that the only thing I saw was a double top, right? The only thing I saw was a double top, so I wasn't interested in these cells, but if it creates a bigger consolidation, right? It looks like it is creating a bigger consolidation. Uh, potentially looking for a sell is okay if it fits that fits your kind of plan. But when you zoom out a little bit, the problem here, in my opinion, is I think the move has already happened. Like the, the bearish move has already dropped quite significantly. Okay, and while I do think if we're only looking at this part of the price action, ignore the rest. If we're only looking at this part, then yeah, I do agree there is another push down. But when I zoom out, when I consider everything else, uh, it leaves me a little bit more, I'm a little bit more cautious with this, something like this. I just think that the down move has already happened. We were at much, much higher point and whether or not this is going to continue further or not is hard to explain, really. I think I would much more incline when the price is at the top. You see these cells that from last year, I would much, much more inclined to get involved in these cell while the price is still at the top. So there's a lot more room to the downside or a lot more momentum. Why don't we catch all this is different, right? There's momentum here when we're at the top. Uh, but I felt like because we're, we dropped quite a bit already, we're you know at this consolidation. So I'm going to be a little bit more cautious with them. And I think ultimately they all really follow what Dollar Cat would be doing. And Dollar Cat, I mentioned on Monday, I do have a bearish kind of bias, but it's not shaping up at this given moment. And I mentioned earlier in the beginning that we could potentially form a bigger consolidation before the downside. So I'm going to observe this area a little bit more. What is the alarm outside the window? It is someone else's home's uh, home alarm, I guess. Um, where I live in a residential, it's all houses here. So it's people have an alarm in their home and maybe someone triggers it or something like that. So nothing bad towards me or anything. It's just uh, next door neighbor really, so. It is uh, on again, so I apologize. It is on again, but uh, nothing bad, so don't worry. Nothing bad is happening to me or anything, so. 
Uh, but I think this is a good time to wrap it up. Unless there is any last minute questions, boys and girls, I'm happy to take a couple more questions. If not, uh, like I said, I will do the recap videos on the weekend, like I always do, to recap these few positions that I closed down, right? Dollar yen, silver, and euro dollar. I will outline these once more when I do the recap videos. And maybe I will enter more positions towards the end of the week. We don't know. And I do have Ripple uh, open as well. Other than that, is going to be a next Monday market outlook. Okay, and then going over the market. I might try to find a time in between to make a video, but I might not. I already made a video about the trend line, so if you're interested, um, you can watch this trend line videos. Uh, hopefully, you can get a better understanding of how I use the trend line to frame the price auction, etc. Uh, other than that, trading view, all of my analysis or ideas, they're all here. And Telegram is where I update, you know, my journal. I just update my journal from August. You're welcome to go look at this one. Um, and, you know, the trades I open and close, my analysis, my feedback, uh, everything, education and content, everything is in here. Uh, like I said, I don't do ads in here. I don't do introducing brokers. I don't uh, do anything uh, like that or VIP signal subscription or whatever. Uh, this is basically a VIP signal group for free. Right? So if you can utilize it, it's not going to be a signal group. But if you really watch my analysis, if you pay attention to the the, the ideas that I have, that it's basically a free signal service if you know how to use it to your advantage. Right? If you have your own trading plan and risk management, you know that all my all my analysis is a direction, it's my outlook, it's a bias. But if you can use that towards your advantage, then it is going to help you, right? Silver Aussie Kiwi, yeah, um, that is really about it, really. I, I don't have any other ones that I watch. I mean, I will, I'll be watching Euro Dollar, uh, but I don't think it's going to be ready anytime soon. If it does break out, then yeah, consolidation here after, I will get back into a position. Right? It's very, very logical now that we completed this type of structure. Lower time frame continuation, lower time frame correction after breakout, right? Always the entry that I talk about. Um, I think that's perfectly fine to look for that if it does happen. And again, this is a very good, good learning curve is that don't get defeated if you either didn't catch this bullish one or you exit the trade. I think this exit to me was the perfect exit to my to my knowledge at the time. But I would never know what will happen after. Right, and I talk about that same example when we see our Kiwi Swiss. Like if I didn't exit here at the same head and shoulder, the same top of the structure, then I would lose all my profit. Right, it's very, very simple, right? It's the same idea here on Euro Dollar is that if we, if we didn't exit the position, uh, we don't know if this is going to continue to drop all the way down. We have no idea what will happen. So all we can do is manage it actively, manage it to our best advantage, to our to to the charge to the uh, the information that we have based on backtesting and chart work, and because the move has already played out, we are already at the top of the overall structure. It is a probability of a reversal, so exit the trade accordingly. But you can always get back into a position after if it shakes up again. Right? We just don't want to hold a position. You don't want a position running very 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 good in profit end up less than that when you exit the trade you end up less than that then you're going to get more emotional and upset at yourself right so learn to take profit learn to manage a trade actively and that will help you in the long run right All right, so I will end the stream here, everyone. So very happy to see some of you guys. And again, I apologize with the voice or the sound. Hopefully to get that fixed or get that changed up. But other than that, I am just watching Euro dollar. I'll be watching dollar yen if it does break out and followed by a correction to go. 
Uh, I will be looking at Aussie Kiwi as well if it gets a consolidation here. I'm actually quite interested in Aussie Kiwi actually, so now I'll sort of alert here. Um, not much on commodity except silver. I think silver is pushing up once again, so it's fine taking a little bit of profit here. We can get back in, right? I always talk about get back into the position if it shapes up once more. So I can potentially get back into silver as well. And uh, not much on indices. I went over. I'm looking for more selling opportunity than buying. So I'm not interested until some bearish kind of price action develop. And crypto, I am only in Ripple. And I'm just kind of my stop loss is still at minus one. And I'm just waiting to see what will happen here. But I do like a couple other ones. I point out Dogecoin and uh, Binance Coin. Binance Coin also looking clean. And Cardano as always. All right. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much for being with me today for the last an hour and 40 minutes. And I will see you guys all. I will make the recap video on the weekend. And I shall see you guys live again on Monday, New York session next week. All right. Thank you very much. And have a good day. Have a good day. Good evening. Good morning.